Digital evangelism is really easy. Please remember to like, comment and share this video. Also, please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. All these things give us favour with the YouTube algorithm and help our content to be seen by more people. God bless. Pressing on, the king's priests. To press in, oh sorry, the call to the priesthood. To press into the kingdom and onto God's purpose for us as his priest, we are going to have to understand what it means to be the king's priest. The promise to those who are appointed to mourn in Zion, Isaiah 61 verse 4 said, and they shall build up old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. But ye shall be named the priest of the Lord. Men shall call you ministers of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles and in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. When we think of priests, we usually think of someone who is in a special relationship with God, able to approach him on the behalf of others to intercede. It is not a wrong concept, especially if we stay away from the idea that the priesthood is only for a select few with special training. This is what the system of church has propagated. According to scripture, every believer in Christ has been made a priest through Jesus. If we are to walk in the privilege and responsibilities of a priest in the kingdom of God, we must understand what it means to be a priest. And I can't emphasize this enough. The system of church does not emphasize the priesthood of all believers. So nobody, I don't say nobody, but most people do not understand that there is an expectation on their life that is called to be a priest. First Peter 2, 5 and 9. Ye also as lively stones are built up a spiritual house and holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood and holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who have called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. This is the call to the priesthood. We're seeing it here in the New Testament. And formed us into a kingdom, a royal race, priest to his God and father to him be glory and power and majesty sorry, and the majesty and the dominion throughout the ages and forever and ever, so be it. So we've been called, we've been built up into a spiritual house, a holy priesthood. We have been chosen to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation. And we have been formed into a royal race, a kingdom of priests. So the concept of the priesthood of all believers is not a New Testament concept. So. This idea now that all believers in Christ are, you know, are priests, this is not new. This is an Old Testament concept because all of Israel were to be priests as well. Not necessarily the Levitical priests, but they were called to be priests. Look what Exodus says. Now, therefore, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine, and ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. So as the Levitical priestly order was set apart from the common mass, so the Israelites compared with other people were to sustain the same close relationship with God, a community of spiritual sovereigns, a holy nation set apart to preserve the knowledge and worship of God. So yes, while the whole of Israel wasn't called to the priest, to, 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 the, the, Levit Le, sorry, to the Levitical priesthood, they were called to be priests to the world. They were called to be set apart. They were called to sustain a close relationship with, with God and to preserve the knowledge and the worship of God. So to the Gentiles, the individual average Israelite was supposed to be a priest to them, right? So this concept of the priesthood of all believers is an Old Testament 
concept. Most of the principles of the priesthood which are found in the Old Testament apply equally to the New Testament priesthood as well. Priesthood is bestowed upon all those who are members of the right family, just as it was only the sons of Aaron who are priests under the law of Moses, so it is only those who are part of the family of God who are priests today. Priesthood is not something which men can bestow upon other men or even which the church can bestow. It is the result of being born again, which constitutes one to be a child of God and thus be in Christ a new creature. This is why I always say, stop waiting on someone to lay hands on you to do the will of God, to fulfill the great commission. Nobody needs to lay hands on you for you to be a priest. By right of being born again, if you have experienced the new birth, you are now a priest. Some of us might be priests in training in that we have just come into our priesthood and we're still learning and understanding. And, I, I, and technically we're all still priests in training because we're all trying to perfect our priesthood. We're all trying to be like Christ. We're all trying to be like the great high priest. But no man can bestow this on you. And so what church has done has had people waiting for the ordination service to, do the, to fulfill the great commission. This is a crime against the will of God. This is a crime against the pattern that Christ left. This is a crime against the pattern that the apostles left. This is a crime against the scripture. Because people are waiting to... To, 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 to fulfill the calling and the gift on their life because they're waiting on another man to tell them that they are worthy of doing it. Now, this is not to undo or to, to speak against the laying on of hands for ministry. This is all right and this is all good. And this is not speaking against um, the leadership that God has put there because man confirms, but man doesn't ordain. And so all of us are not in a perfect situation. All of us don't go to a perfect church where the preacher is 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 really looking into our lives and, and, and asking God what is the calling on their lives. The fact is, because of the system of church and because there's so few people at the top, the preacher doesn't or the, 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 the leaders don't have time to disciple each individual saint. And that's not the way it was supposed to be. Because everybody who reached the age of age of maturity in church is supposed to be discipling each other. And so we should be able to come together and be able to identify gifts and calling in each other. This is why the church fails to grow, because you've got the few people at the top who were designated to, 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 to lay hands and tell everyone beneath them what they are. That's not how God intended it to be. And this is why today people are sitting in church for 30 years and they can't tell you what they are. When a baby is born, you know what sex it is. When you are filled with the Holy Ghost, you can know your gift and your calling. Not many days hence. Once you're born again, you should be able to identify what you are and who you are. Now, before we get into individual gifting and callings, you're a priest. You must offer sacrifice. You must, you must um, make intercessory prayers on the behalf of others. But this does not happen in the system of church, or it does not happen enough. And so because we are waiting for ungodly men sometimes to bestow uh, titles upon us, then we can't move forward. Because some of these men or women have started to be bestow titles on people that God never gave them. I said it before, just because someone lays hands on you and calls you a deacon or a prophet of a priest, that doesn't make you one. God makes you what you are man can just confirm says no man has a right to call you a priest sorry no man has a right to call you a prophet and god didn't call you a prophet but guess what if you're born again you're a priest and you need to figure out what god has called you to in your priesthood so priests are those whose sins have been atoned for so that they are free to minister to other sinners this atonement for the new testament priest is that which christ our great high priest has made through the shedding of his blood on the cross. Priestly privilege comes with responsibilities. Like our Old Testament counterparts, we have the privilege of access to God. With this privilege comes responsibilities. So they sacrifice of our bodies, praises to God, of our substance and our service. Also intercession, standing in the gap 
the ministry of reconciliation. Uh, moreover, as Samuel, Samuel says, moreover, as for me, far be it from me that I should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way. That's one of the chiefest of intercessors we see in the word. Samuel was saying that he's not even going to sin against God in ceasing to pray for Israel. It is a sin against God when we don't fulfill our priesthood, when we don't intercede on the behalf of others. Any comments before we move to the next part? Do you see a situation in the kingdom now where the priesthood of all believers is being emphasized and people are being brought into the priesthood? Have you been told that you're a priest, that being born again means you have a responsibility? To fulfill your priesthood have you ever seen it like this before praise the lord thank you for my call you know i was actually speaking to somebody yesterday about something similar and um he was saying that He just, we were talking about children and the way that um, we, we, we spent our time in church. And he was saying that he spent most of his time in church to the detriment of his house because nobody told him that his first responsibility was to his home was to minister to his children and he goes now his children are older and he's now realized because he used to he goes that he used to go to work but then every single evening there was something going on at his church and he was there and his pastor at the time didn't stop him or didn't correct him or anything and now his children are older and they hate church can i stop you right there and he... you have jumped ahead but you have jumped ahead in the right way so i want you to come back in on the same thing but that is a perfect interlude into where i'm going because i've just started here by talking about the call to the priesthood right and look what samuel says right I am not, he said he's not, he's, he's far bit from him that he should sin against the Lord in ceasing to pray for you, but I will teach you the good and the right way, right? So we've been called to the priesthood, we accept that, right? And you have just went ahead and said that there was a man who didn't realize that his first job, his first responsibility, oh my God, is to be a priest in his home. Where are we going? Now let us explore our priestly service and responsibilities. 